What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. I'm the Homie Joshua, also known as Rascal, and an individual named Justin Flores died in El Monte, uh, California yesterday in an incident that also had led to the death of two El Monte Police Department officers. And so um, it's being said that he killed them. Who knows, right? Um, there was multiple officers opening fire. It, it looks like it moved into a parking lot area. So who knows what gun did what? However, because they were responding to a call, um, the responsibility lies on Flores, whether whether he had a gun and bullets from his gun hit anybody or not. Legally, he'd be accountable. He's also deceased. Um, so it's kind of a moot point. But there's a bigger conversation here, right? Because already this morning, there's sources within the district attorney's office speaking to the LA Times and others on the condition of being anonymous because they're not authorized to speak about it, that are saying that um, that Flores was on probation for a gun charge uh, that happened in, in February. And they're calling him, other pundits and commentators are calling him one of Gascon's kids, uh, George Gascon's the, you know, the uh, district attorney down there. And so let's get into this a bit, right? I don't know what happened in this situation. Um, of course, not many people do. But what we do know just from law enforcement, which is sometimes credible and sometimes not, they were responding to a call of a potential stabbing that was happening at this hotel. Now, they did find a woman inside the hotel. That woman was not stabbed, right? So, so they responded most likely in a very aggressive way uh, because of what the call for service was. However, what they were responding to wasn't happening. Nobody was getting stabbed. Um, so who knows what was going on, but th this notion that they were coming over there and, and they were protecting the community and they were saving lives and they were doing all this and that. Um, it doesn't sound like anybody was in danger until the police arrived, right? Um, nobody was hurt until the cops got there. And so uh, I think it's, it'd be wise to not lose sight of that. Um, also, this idea of, uh, of, of these, these officers and, and how they're put in danger because this individual was, was not incarcerated. He got caught with a pistol and apparently some drugs. And um, he, they dropped the drug charge and they dropped the felon in position of, of uh, ammunition charge, gave him probation for a uh, felon in possession of a firearm. In this day and age with, with the virus going around, um, that alone has kept a lot of people from going to county jail or going to prison for very short terms uh, when historically they would have, right? So independent of police, re of, of, of sentencing reforms or any of that stuff, just the virus has led to people not being put into custodial settings for things that in the past they would have. Now, Gascon, the district attorney, he comes from San Francisco, Right. Um, he was a DA in San Francisco. And as, as a lot of you guys know, the, the district attorney that we had in San Francisco up until, you know, a few days ago was this dude, Chesa Boudin. Right. Chesa Boudin was recalled by the voters of San Francisco. So they're waiting. You got to wait for the mayor to appoint another district attorney. Now, Chesa Boudin, I, I know him. I know him personally. I had the privilege of working alongside of him when he was with the public defender's office in San Francisco before he decided to run for district attorney. Um, I worked with a lot of attorneys out of that office defending cases, very good public defenders and, uh, and very sharp attorneys, man. And we had a, a fair amount of success up there in cases that, that otherwise people would have had the book thrown at them. And, and so I'm proud of that work and I'm proud of the folks that I got to work with. There was actually a handful of them that ran for judges also at the same time as Jessa was going to be the DA. Because in San Francisco, public defenders don't become judges. Only DAs become judges. And, um, and they wanted to, to upset that, that balance, right? So it's an effort to influence the system in a way that, that would be more representative of the community. So let's talk about a, a couple of things. One, you know, it's real funny how the DA's office is able to leak information about defendants and information about people that are alleged to have harmed police officers and information about anybody that they want to. 
uh, with with impunity, without consequence, right? However, when an officer is involved, nah, that, that's you don't get body cam footage for two years if you're going to court, right? Like it, it's not every time, but the DA's office and the police department are very good at blocking information about those that are sympathetic to their cause when those individuals are in question, right? Um, the Fresno Police Department has, has a history of continuing to employ officers. They got officers on the police force in Fresno that have shot more people in the line of duty than the folks that they're popping on the streets for shootings, right? Um, and that information is very, very, very difficult to get. But all it takes is, is you know, 12 hours and, and you can know that this dude's on probation for a gun charge and, and everything else. His mom has come out and said that the police have been really harassing her, detaining her for hours, accusing her of things. Um, she wasn't there. She, you know, she she's not a factor in this besides the fact that the person she gave birth to is now dead after an incident with some police in which a couple of police are dead, too. So but this this smear campaign of, oh, this is Gascon's kid. This is a result of lenient policies. This is why we need to be tough on crime. This is why you know, uh, these liberals and, and all this uh, uh, criminal justice reform, it makes us safe because now there's two heroes dead. Let's pull back a little bit and, and talk about the truth, right? Um, San Francisco became a much safer city under Chester Woodin, okay? Um, the narrative about him, the narrative about his office was a political smear campaign, okay? If you wanna compare Sacramento County with San Francisco County, okay? Sacramento County incarcerates people at a far higher rate than San Francisco. And I'm talking person for person. So don't tell me what city has more people. When you account for the population, far more people go to jail in Sacramento. People go to jail for longer in Sacramento. Um, Sacramento spends millions of over a hundred million on incarcerating people. They incarcerate at, at, you know, roughly, I believe it's like 20, 30% higher than the state average, right? So they are tough on crime. Okay. They, they are a much more violent city than San Francisco. Um, San Francisco incarcerates people as significantly lower than the state average, right? They have saved the state of California more money. So they've offset all the money that Sacramento has, has cost the state for incarcerating people. Sacramento's in the opposite. I mean, San Francisco's the opposite extreme, right? So San Francisco incarcerates less people. They, when they do incarcerate people, it's for less amount of time. And aside from property crime, San Francisco is insanely safer than Sacramento. But Sacramento's DA, Schubert, Amy Schubert, is a tough on DA conservative prosecutor. She was running for attorney general too. Um, and, and, and thankfully that didn't play out well. But she's iron fisted, she's tough, don't cut criminals, no slack, we're after them, we're this, we're that, right? San Francisco and Sacramento solve about the same percentage of homicide cases a year, right? And, and so it's not the rate of, of, of arrest necessarily, right? Police departments clear about the same percentage of cases, which is actually a very high percentage. The idea that people are running around the streets of Sacramento killing hella people and nobody's going to jail for it is foolish. The idea that that's happening in San Francisco is equally as foolish, right? San Francisco has higher property crimes, but it's a much wealthier city, right? The, the, the average income in San Francisco is over double that in Sacramento. And wealthier cities, tourist attraction cities, tend to have higher rates of robbery and, and property crime, okay? But the violence, it's much safer in the city. But if you watch local news, especially here in California, especially around the Bay Area, and if you watch these national news networks, and I use the word news loosely, um, San Francisco is always put up, there's all oh, this tore up ass city, everything, blah, 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 right? 
it's safer. It's safer. Now, is it a little dirty or that kind of stuff? Sure. Sure. But but that's not the DA's fault. That's the city's fault. The government in San Francisco has a bunch of money and they have these emergency response teams and these squads for this and an alternative to 911. And they have all these different programs that the voters of San Francisco have have put into place and get taxed to provide for. And the city just doesn't utilize them in a responsible way. So that's not on the DA's office. Um, but nonetheless, th this is not specifically around San Francisco or Sacramento or even El Monte, right? The point I'm trying to make is this, this whole knee-jerk reaction, it, it's political it, It's political to its core, right? Oh, this is one of those liberal DAs, Gascon, and it's his fault that these cops are killed. No, that you cannot reasonably or logically make that connection, right? Just as you cannot reasonably or logically make the connection that people are dropping like flies in the streets of San Francisco because criminals are being let out, okay? A, people are not dropping like flies. B, there's no relationship between the two, right? In, in Sacramento, folks are getting bodied um, and people are getting arrested and going to jail for it. Whether they're the right people or crimes or whatever, I don't know. It, it, that's not the point. Um, but there's a tough, like, again, a tough on crime DA. A DA that sounds like what these cops are sounding like. A DA that has the support of every major law enforcement organization in the state when she was running to become the attorney general for the state of California. All the cops loved her. All the cops put their money and their resources behind her, right? But, but her city's not safe. If that's the way we're measuring safe, right? Her policies, her mindset, her advancing the agenda of rank and file police officers and the big money that supports them has not made for a safer community, right? The reality is violence in the community has a lot of different factors, right? It is not just about the police. It is not just about the district attorney. It is not just about the defense attorneys. It, it actually is far bigger than that, right? Because all those groups are reactionary. They step in when shit's already popped off, right? There's a lot more work addressing economic inequalities, addressing the fact that folks don't have a place to live, addressing the food insecurities, addressing all kinds of, of, of government decisions that impact the hood and having resources for mentors, for after-school programs, for, for credible messengers, for culturally competent engagement, right? Um, towards communities that traditionally are not served very well, providing other opportunities, providing hope, providing resources. But see, cops don't provide hope, right? It, that's not their job. And, and so violence prevention money most of the time funnels through the police department, though. So if you ain't working alongside the police department, you're not getting the resources that you need to serve the community that you grew up in or the community that you know. Other agencies who are willing to advance the police agenda, they get that money. And shockingly, they don't do as good a job working with the community, right? Um, so, so it is bigger than that. So let's not look at this thing and, oh man, these two cops got killed. Any loss of life is sad, okay? Being a police officer in this country is still radically safer than being a truck driver. So let's not get carried away about they put their lives on the line every day, blah, 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 right? Like that's, that old tired trope, it, it's just factually untrue, okay? Um, it's really safe to be a police officer up, up here around, around SAC and, and, you know, other places. So the idea they're in danger, 99.9% .9 of the time they're not. Um, they also get paid very, 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 very well for uh, putting themselves in situations. And as we saw in Uvalde, Texas, you know, they pick and choose the battles that they're willing to fight, right? Um, and so it's it's interesting. I don't hear as much conservative media dogging those cops in Uvalde, right? Um, but yet this dude's on the hook for, for two cops dying because they rushed in and treated him like he was stabbing somebody when he wasn't and a conflict ensues. I don't know the details, right? And I'm not saying that, that A, I'm not saying that this, this dude killed the cops. I don't know what happened. Cops could have shot each other. Who knows? Um, wouldn't be the first time. But I'm also... 
not defending him if 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 he did. I, whatever happened happened. Um, loss of life is tragic. My condolences to their families. The narrative though is dangerous. This is the type of incident that's going to lead people to say, we got to get this DA out of here. And the influence that the DA has is a lot more significant in cases not like this, right? Um, when the DA decides to prosecute, when the DA decides to put you in a, in a, a, a program instead of in jail, when the DA decides to do something other than lock you up for long periods of time as a punishment, that has an effect on the person that gets caught down the street with dope, right? Um, use myself as an example real quick, and, and this is not breaking news. I got popped with, with Coke and pills in my pocket outside my apartment uh, sometime back before I was on YouTube, uh, sometime back. I had reverted to some old behaviors and hustling because of midlife crisis shit. It, it's in other videos. Go look around and find it. Uh, if it was not the height of COVID, I would have gone to jail. I would have gone to jail. At the time, then and now, I have my kids 50-50 custody, right? So I'd have gone to jail. I wouldn't have been able to see my kids. I would have, you know, further traumatized them, right? Uh, they didn't see any of this unfold. They were never around drugs, anything else. But, um, and, and things would have went bad, right? On a host of levels. But I didn't get taken to jail. I got written up two tickets for misdemeanor possession. I went to court. At court, they charged me with two felony possessions because of my, my background, my prior criminal history. I Prop 36 did. I went to a drug program. I didn't need a drug program. I was a drug dealer, not a user. But when I went to that drug program, I came to grips with the fact that, that I had a drinking problem. It was an outpatient program. I got help for my drinking. Uh, it, it was a rough road, but I got help for my drinking, which in turn made me a better parent, made me a better person, made me a better partner to my old lady, right? Made me more responsible. I didn't lose my kids. I lost a little bit of time with them because of, of, of child custody court, but, but from the criminal court standpoint, I lose time with them. I went through rigorous testing, drug testing and alcohol testing twice a week for months and months and months, right? Um, random. And I completed that program. And that charge is not on my record. Uh, I mean, I got an attempted murder from 96, right? So, but that's so long ago, a lot of times it doesn't come up in background checks. This would have come up in every background check, thereby hurting my chances at employment, hurting my chances to do things. And so uh, it hurt my chance to do criminal defense work in, in California because it, you know, it, it comes up. But my life is better. My kids' life are better. My lady's life is better. Everybody's life is better because I didn't go to jail that day, right? Now, granted, that was... COVID and Prop 36, a law that the voters in California fought for, that's what saved my ass, not the DA's office, okay? Um, they kind of didn't have a choice, right? It, it's an entitlement to Prop 36 a case. Um, and it's the only case I caught since, you know, since my case when I was 19. The DA in San Francisco, Chaser Boudin, was doing stuff like that all the time. And, and out of that came stories like mine. Far more stories like mine than this stuff. Gascon does stuff like that. And those are the cases that you don't hear about, right? Those are the, the you know, you got a DUI, but you don't go to jail type shit. Those are the cases that you don't hear about, but that have a much more tangible, practical impact on people's every day-to-day -day lives. The shooting of these cops, this has an impact on the cops' lives. This has an impact on on uh, uh, Justin's life, the dude that, you know, was into incident because he's passed and his family has to deal with that. But it doesn't impact your average residents, right? Um, in in over-policed communities, a handful of dope arrests can have a huge impact on the entire community. So I'm not a politician. I don't root for any political party. Um, but I will say this, man, these quote-unquote progressive DAs, which are not perfect, by the way. I, I'm, they're better. They're, they're not great. I still have a lot of issues with them and with the way the system is set up, but they are better. 
And the voters of California have wanted things to get better. And they're trying everything they can to get things better. And what we know, based on facts and figures and numbers and common sense and lived experience, is tough on crime policies don't make safer communities. Flat out. There is nothing to suggest otherwise, except for the talking points of conservatives, the talking points of the police officers, which have a, an unusually loud voice in this country. So that's it, man. Hey, it sucks the cops got killed. It sucks that dude got killed. I don't know what happened. I'm glad he wasn't stabbing nobody. I'm sorry that he got ran up on as if he was. And, um, you know, I don't condone violence, man, at all. But, but let's tone it down. And, and and I encourage you guys, man, when you hear that narrative, oh, that's, 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 push back against that shit in your own circle of influence. Let people know, hey, you, you, you're you barking up the wrong tree, homes. That's, that's not how it works, right? We've seen what happened with three strikes. We've seen what happened with public class. Oh, man, we need to pass a law so that this tragedy never happens again. And yet people with unmentionable offenses still get passes. Look at the dude with Cain Velasquez in that case in, in San Jose, right? Um, people with those kinds of fences still get passes. And yeah, you got people doing all day for, for theft. You know, it, it, be careful. Don't fall for the okie doke, man. Help others move in excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it and help your community because they need you. Till next time. Take care.